Hello everyone and welcome back to the shop. Glad you could join me again. I hope you guys are all taking care of yourselves, especially considering all the stuff that is going on around the world at this time. How are you guys doing with cabin fever? I know a lot of you, depending on what state you live in, you're not being allowed to go out and do much of anything. Some states are really taking this situation to an extreme. There's certain words I don't want to use in this video because YouTube has a lot of filters right now about it. So forgive me if I don't use the certain words that you're used to in relation to what I'm discussing. Anyway, so um, I know some states, uh, California, New York, uh, Florida, etc., they're being rather extreme and not allowing people to to go anywhere or do anything for an extended period of time. So I thought this would be a good time to talk about vehicle storage, storing your cars for an extended period of time. Now I'm gonna give you 10 things to do when storing your car to preserve them and keep them in the best condition possible so when you go back to them they're ready to run and ready to serve you again properly. Now some of these things will apply to short-term storage like a few weeks, a month or two and some of the things will apply more to if you're storing your vehicle six months, a year or long. You know like I said these are the 10 things that I suggest you do and apply the ones that apply best to you in your given situation. Some of you are probably going to be going back to work rather soon in a few weeks maybe a month or so so some of these may not apply so anyway let's start off with number one when you're going to store your car I suggest first you wash your car. Just a good old fashioned cleaning. Get all the contaminants and stuff off your paint finish because if you're gonna be storing it for a long period of time, you don't wanna leave all those contaminants just sitting on your paint, eating away at your clear coat. So if they're sitting in the garage just like mine are doing right now, give them a good wash, let it dry, put them away, and then at least you know you're taking care of your paint job. Number two, keep your battery fully charged. On some vehicles like my Mustang right here, due to the you know alarm that has built in and all sorts of computer functions that are going on it will drain the battery rather quickly on my truck right behind it that you see being an older vehicle from the late 90s it doesn't have any of this uh, fancy smancy sort of uh, stuff going on inside so it doesn't drain the battery hardly at all for example the battery that it has in it right now is about eight years old and as we mostly know most car batteries only last on average four to five years so a battery that that's gone eight years old that tells you that truck is really drawing very little power from that battery giving it a longer life for the Mustang that I hardly drive sometimes because I never take it out during the winter I never take it out in the rain I've always had a policy since I bought that car never to drive it in the rain I got a battery tender and you can get really expensive ones or you can get really inexpensive ones for example I got this Stanley battery tender battery charger trickle charger whatever you want to call it and it's really quite small and very inexpensive. I believe it cost me $15, $19, something around there. So it's not very expensive at all. And it comes with the battery leads that you hook up to your battery, plug it into the wall, and you're good to go. It only puts out like an amp or something like that. So it charges up your car on a regular basis, just keeps it topped off. And here's the box it tells you right there. 1 amp, 12 volt, etc., etc. Very inexpensive and convenient little item to keep on hand. You're not going to use it all the time, but when you need it, it's good to have it. Number three, your tires. Overinflate your tires. Some people may say, well, why, why am I doing that? Overinflate your tires to avoid getting a flat spot. Now, if your cars are going to be sitting like this for two weeks, three weeks, two months, six months, whatever it may be, your tires could develop a flat spot if they sit on the same spot all the time. Now, as you can see on my garage, I have about a foot or two in front of my car and about a foot behind the car. So I can roll this car back and forth for a few inches in both directions and avoid getting a flat spot. That's one thing you can do right there. Every so often, every few weeks, roll it a couple of inches back and forth, avoid a flat spot. The other thing, like I said, overinflate them. If you normally run your tires at about 32 to 35 PSI, look at the tire, look at the indicator, the writing on the sidewall of the tire, and it'll tell you what is the maximum pressure for the tire. Some will be 35, some will be 45, 55, 60, whatever 
it may be. Inflate it to that maximum pressure. Trust me, it will not cause the tire any harm whatsoever and it will prevent getting a flat spot on your tire. Now radials, which is what most cars have nowadays, are pretty good at avoiding flat spots. The old polyester tires from the 60s, 50s, etc. They were really, really prone to that and the flat spot would stay there permanently. On the radial, even if you do get a flat spot, over a few weeks or months it should go away. Number four, be sure to top off your gas tank. That's a very simple thing to do and it can save you a lot of headaches down the road. When you're going to put the car away, just fill up your tank all the way to the maximum filling capacity. That way you reduce the amount of air and moisture in your gas tank which will reduce the chance of any corrosion in your gas tank, um, moisture accumulation, you know water in your gas, that kind of thing and it basically keeps any contaminants out of the gas tank because it's full so therefore nothing else can bleed in there and cause you damage which can contaminate your fuel system later on. So top off your gas tank and that way you can keep it in good condition. That is sufficient, you can stop right there if you're only going to be storing it for a few weeks or maybe a month or so. If you're going to be storing your car for six months to a year or longer, then I suggest you put some stable in the uh, gas tank. Stable will basically keep your gas from going bad and turning into varnish, which it will do if you leave it for six months to a year. So stable will keep your gas from going bad, but Stable is one of those things that you want to use only what is recommended in the instructions. More stable is not more better, okay? Don't do that. And don't say more better. That's terrible grammar. <laughs> anyway, so don't use more stable than what it says because if you use too much of it, it'll turn into a jelly in your gas tank and that'll foul up your whole uh, uh, fuel injection system and your whole fuel system. So don't use more than what is recommended in the instructions. If you use what's in there, what it says, Certain ounces per certain gallons, you'll be fine. And when you start running the car, it'll burn it all out and you'll use it up and you'll be fine. Number five, changing the oil in your car. Now, some people think that you need to change the oil in your car before you store your car. Really, that's not 100% true. That's not really necessary. If you're going to be storing your car for a few weeks, a month or two, you don't really need to worry about it. If you're going to be storing your car for six months or a year, then it is probably smart to change the oil before you store it. That way you get all that old dirty oil with all the contaminants from the combustion process, get that out of your engine and put fresh new clean oil in there. So that is a good thing to do only for long term storage. And a smart thing to do also is if you can, turn over the engine every so often, start it up, run it for a minute or so, turn it back off. That's a good thing to do to prevent the oil from draining all the way off your cylinders and you know every part of the motor down into the uh, oil pan because if the motor sits for too long and gets completely dried out you can get moisture building up inside the motor which can cause you damage and then when you go to start it up you have more friction as well so just turning it over every few weeks you know once a month let's say if you're able to do that that's a good practice to follow right there Keep your engine properly lubricated. Even if you don't run it for long, even if you don't take it out, just keeping the oil throughout the whole engine is a smart thing to do. Number six, make sure that your coolant is properly topped off. Another thing to prevent deterioration of your motor is to have the proper coolant level. And I mean coolant, not water. Make sure that whatever coolant your vehicle uses, you have it topped off to the maximum capacity. That way you know all the surfaces inside the motor, your radiator, the hoses, all that kind of stuff that normally circulate the coolant are at full capacity. Fill it up with water that is mineral free. In other words, don't use water out of your tap. Use like bottled water or something like that. And that way you can, that will mix properly with whatever coolant you have in there. And uh, that will basically top it off for you. If you happen to have a bottle of whatever the coolant is in your vehicle, Go ahead and top it off with that. That's even better. But if you don't, you don't need to run out and buy one. You can use some clean water. And don't mix coolants. In other words, if you have a green coolant, don't mix it with a red one or whatever the case may be. A lot of manufacturers have their own specific coolant. Be sure to stick with that to prevent any problems in your cooling system. Number seven, leave the windows in your car drop down just a crack. Leave them open just a crack. 
Now you may say, why am I going to bother doing that? Well, the thing is, depending on how long you store your vehicle, you know, a month or two, six months, a year, you may get some moisture building up inside your vehicle and you may wind up finding some moldy smell in there when you open it up and go to drive it. So to prevent moisture accumulation inside your car, to prevent that moldy, stinky smell in your car, just leave it open a crack and that way air can circulate in and out of your car and you don't have that musty, moldy smell that can develop inside your vehicle. You want to keep the inside of your vehicle smelling good. If you want to put uh, some nice uh, deodorizer, kind of a, you know, perfume or something inside there, that's perfectly fine too. Get yourself one of those little things you hang off the mirror. That's a good idea too. Keep your car smelling fresh. You don't want to deal with that smell later when you go to drive it. Number eight, leave your vehicle parking brake off. Use wheel chucks instead of the parking brake. And I have another video that tells you how to make your own wheel chucks if you want to. If you have multiple vehicles and you don't want to go out and buy wheel chucks, you can make your own for nothing. Just spare lumber. You know, go watch my other video. I show you how to do that for no cost whatsoever. So use wheel chucks because if depending again how long you leave your vehicle, a few weeks may not matter. If you leave it a couple months, possibly six months to a year, then you start getting more of the chance that your brake shoes or your brake caliper have the potential for seizing up in the spot that it's in. So if it sits there for too long, again, you could get some moisture buildup, anything along those lines, just being stuck in one position for an extended period of time, your e-brake, emergency brake, parking brake, can get stuck in that position, and then later on you're going to have braking problems as you, you know, start the car and try to drive it off. So to prevent that from happening, leave your e-brake off, leave your parking brake off, put some wheel chucks on the tire, and that way you know it can't roll away or go anywhere. Now these two last ones are more optional, depending on the situation that you have, but for long-term storage, these two last ones will come in handy. So number nine, I suggest covering your car. Remember earlier, we started off with washing your car. Well, don't cover your car immediately after you wash it. Allow it to dry fully. Give it a day or two to really air out and dry out. And then if you're going to be storing your car for six months to a year, put a cover on it, if you have one, put a cover on it, and that way you can keep any dust, contaminants, whatever you have in your garage floating around, from settling on your paint and eating away your clear coat. So I didn't put that one at the beginning because that's not really going to apply to everyone, and it's only optional. You really don't have to do it, but it's a good suggestion, so I threw it in there. And going along with number one and number nine for long-term storage, um, again, depending on your area, may be necessary all the time, but more for long-term storage, if you're going to be storing a vehicle for six months to a year, I suggest putting some mothballs or dryer sheets around your vehicle. And the reason for this is to keep critters from getting in under your car. They really hate mothballs and dryer sheets. So if you have little critters, mice, whatever is in your area, you don't want them to get inside your car, make a nest, eat up your interior, eat up your wiring, just be an all around nuisance. So put mothballs and dryer sheets down, prevent them from getting in there, and your car will be safe and sound, so when you're ready to take it back out again, you know it'll be ready to go. Because trust me, mice can do an excessive amount of damage, because one thing a lot of people don't realize, first of all, mice are always chewing on all sorts of stuff. Because their teeth are constantly growing, so they have to wear them out to keep from causing themselves damage in their mouth. Secondly, most car wiring the housing on the uh, wiring, the, the wrapping around the outside of the wiring, is a soy-based product. So it tastes good to mice. So that's why they love eating your wiring in your car. So avoid that problem and try to keep them away from your car. Anyway, so I hope that helps you guys out. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was entertaining, educational, and gives you a small project to do during this time that you're staying home. Hope you guys all stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Don't get sick. Enjoy yourselves while you're at home. Hope to see you back here next time. Bye-bye for now.